Uh, well, yeah. Speaking of something that's been fucked up by people writing it and bad writers, let's talk about the DCU. So the DC uh, movie universe, which has probably like gotten the, the most heat. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. We're going to follow that from the rest of the show. The DCQ. Uh, <laughs> so they probably got the most heat probably of any movie franchise or universal movie kind of thing going on. And so we were decided to take a moment to say, if we had to stop right here, and this means Zack Snyder's Justice League does not does not does not include it. We're going with the, the Justice League. That's still being panned. How could you remake it going forward to make the right to ship? So I'm gonna start with Jason and then Jared, and then we'll wrap this up and see what ideas will come up with. So Jason, if you had to use the Justice League as the start as the last point of the movie, how do you write this ship? Uh, by ignoring everything that happened before, <laughs> rebooting <laughs> everything. <laughs> no, well, here's the thing for me: is like DC has had 80 years of characters. We don't need origin stories. We don't need come together stories. We just need movies with these characters in it, and the characters, hopefully, you know, being somewhat like the characters that we know and love, right? Like. So we don't need like another like I don't need like a Flash origin movie. I don't need a Cyborg origin movie. I don't want to see Batman's parents get shot for the three thousandth time. Like, cool. give me like, give me Dick Grayson. Give me give me Booster Gold. Give me a, a Green Arrow movie. Give me give me John freaking Stewart for crying out loud. Like, you know, like I just read something today that they were making an HBO show. Uh, starring, um, I can't remember the actor's name, but some generic white guy, and they're doing Guy Gardner, and I'm like, you know, Guy Gardner's mm-hmm. fun, but like, like this is it's 2021. Like you have so like such a breadth of characters, you have such a a a well to to pull from, and you're you're always picking up the blandest aspects of your universe. Like they were talking about doing like a trench movie. Like who cares about the trench? I don't care about this <laughs> like. Like, I don't care about that. Like, give me, like, a Bat Family movie. Give me, like, actual Dick Grayson and, and Tim Drake and the Red Hood and, like, uh, like them teaming up to fight the Court of Owls or something like that. I don't know. It's like, give me, like, these characters that you already have, that you've already written for, and just make movies with them in it. You don't need to, to, to do be fancy. Just do, like, HK films with, with Red Hood, you know, Shooting people, I don't know. It's it's it's, it's <laughs> actually quite simple. Like the one of the the best movies that I best superhero movies that I, that has come out in the last ten years, to in my opinion, is Dread with uh, Carl Urban, right? Mm-hmm. And it's a great movie. It does not expand the universe whatsoever. It does not d- give us anything about Judge Dread as a person. Doesn't do anything besides do Judge Dread and a day in the life of him. And he just kills people and does awesome action shit and says, I am the law really coolly. And that's it. And that's awesome. That, <laughs> whole, movie, that whole movie <laughs> takes place in that one building. In that one building. Yeah. You get at the beginning, you get something outside of it for maybe 15 minutes. And then we're at that building and that's it. Yeah, right. and it was amazing. It was great. Yeah. It was yeah. phenomenal. It'll never happen again because it didn't make no money. But still, <laughs> Warner <laughs> Brothers can do stuff like that. They can make movies. I mean, like right now, they're they're literally giving them away for free. So like, just give me a you know fifty million dollar movie that stars you know Booster Gold or 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 uh, let's go with freaking. Um, Mr. Terrific, somebody like that, you know, something like that's, you know, not, you know, this giant, you know, world, anything. This is day in the life of the superhero. And you can just put in references to connect it to other things. Like the thing that they don't realize is that Iron Man, the first Iron Man, they didn't, you know, talk about all the other superheroes. The first time it was like the last, after the movie was done, then they brought in Sam Dice, like, hey, there might be other people out there. And that was it. (laughs) Right, 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 right. Like, you don't have to do stuff like that. You can be like, oh, like, you know, as Dick Grayson's fighting in Gotham, you might, you know, hint at Superman being around or hint that, you know, Green Lantern's around. You don't have to, like, you know, set these things up in a way that you have to fully explain it because we've already been with these characters 
for almost a century. <laughs> so <laughs> we don't need to be like spoon fed this stuff anymore. Just make the content. And like they've done that before. They made like their animated movies are phenomenal because they just make the content. Oh, right? Yes. Like that's all mm -hmm. they have to do. Just in fact, you don't even have to make do anything, dude. Just take your animated movies and make them live action and call it a day. You know? <laughs> just do that. Yep. And I'll be happy. And you and you'll get my money from you. That's it. That's it. All right, so that's Darren, how do you fix it? I think they're going the right direction. They clearly don't have the patience or the talent to do what Marvel's doing. I think the direction they're going now where a director can come up with a script that they approve using any one of their superheroes. They can cast it. They don't have to worry about what happened before, what happened prior. They don't have to worry about casting a specific actor to continually play the same character over and over again. And that director is free upon approval to just make a movie, like you said, kind of like slice of life in that particular character. If they have a good story and the character fits that story, then yeah, absolutely. Uh, I didn't like the Joker because it could have just been any psychopath that happened to like clowns. No reason for it to be the Joker in that whole entire movie. But if they take... Oh. Batman I will push specific. back a little bit on the Joker right. one, only slightly. So, because they framed the Joker as a, like a what if thing, like it wasn't supposed to be part of any continuity. It was supposed to be an individual. Sure. What they did with the Joker is what I wish the Star Wars stories would have done with the Star Wars universe, where you could have taken just a, a random, like it doesn't have to be any of the Skywalkers. It don't got to be any Boba Fett. It's just a random dude in the universe doing some shit like even the movie solo if it doesn't about him solo just about a random like theft in the universe that, that's a that's the way it works. yeah yeah yeah, like, yeah it's a heist movie in part so when i look at the joke i'm like oh, okay like this is what i wanted from the star wars universe where if you're going to give me these what if kind of moments then yeah like make it just a good story because you can make an argument the dark knight don't need batman or the joker you can make that a crime thriller and it works almost the same goddamn way the, the best superhero movies are usually the movies where you don't need the superheroes. It's the drama in the story that sets it up. The superheroes is just the extra buy-in for us. Like we love, we love Winter Soldier. Winter Soldier works without having to be Cap and Bucky. I mean, yeah. like the characters itself, it can work the same way. Just maybe the hundred year thing would be a little hard to figure out for human beings, but you can figure <laughs> out like, a way to make it more Martin. <laughs> like, like political like, it's it's essentially years, like, uh, out, like. The Winter yeah. Soldier's like Goldeneye, you know, your your partner from a long time ago is coming back and haunting you, and you're like, oh shit, yeah. now what am I gonna do about it? You know, right. that's, but you I'm always push back on the Joker. But go ahead, go ahead, sir. <sighs> then have Batman in it, even for a little bit. <laughs> Otherwise, that's one of my biggest pet peeves about movies as well. Yeah. Like, you can't give me Morbi Morbius without Spider Man. Like, you yeah. can't give me Venom yeah. without Venom Catwoman without. without Batman. Like, yeah. you can make a movie about Catwoman, that's fine, but you gotta like. Say Batman's around. <laughs> you know, right, right. The, the Gotham TV show. Hey guys, let me pitch you a show. It's gonna be a Batman universe, but without Batman. And we're gonna keep changing to a better show every single episode. You're gonna be like, why isn't this taking place 20 years in the future when they're actually right. Right. <laughs> make him new Batman? Make him still figuring it out. Don't make him a kid. I'm just yeah. You know, oh. Or um, just keep, out of, keep every single other character out of it and make it just a shitty Gotham crime procedure. Like, yeah, like young people think okay. like Seven is Gotham before Batman became Batman. You know, oh, like nice. right. a Ooh, shitty town. You know, you can do some. You can do some minor like characters, like you know your gangsters, like the Falcones and what have you. Yeah. But you know, don't give me like the Penguin or or the Joker before Batman hits puberty. Like that doesn't make any damn sense. You know? <laughs> it does not. Um, I have to say, not a big Star Wars fan, absolutely love The Mandalorian, and it took them more than a season for us to bump into a Jedi. Yeah, and yeah, they couldn't even I mean, postpone that long enough to make it worth yeah. it. Yeah, and it was phenomenal. <laughs> oh, I, I, was on, I was on the edge of my seat the entire time, and then uh, oh, what's her face comes in as Ahsoka, Ahsoka. Yeah. yeah, she knocked it out of the park, in my opinion. They got Clearly, they needed to call the Marvel guys on the the, the facial de aging thing for Hamill because that's <laughs> tragic. Um, look, my boys at Corridor Digital redid the facial animation, did a better job, better job, way better job. Like training an AI <laughs> with old pictures of Mark Hamill. I just, uh, but yeah, um, 
It doesn't, yeah, fucking, I'm, it's a galaxy. There's got to be more stories out there that don't involve the fucking Skywalkers. <laughs> like, and it also goes back to the point, especially the Mandalorian, is like, let people who are fans of the, of the genre, let people who are talented as filmmakers and as storytellers take characters and do fun things with them. Right. And mm-hmm. basically, for the most part, get out their way. That's basically what happened with the Mandalorian. Is like they let Bob Dave Filoni and and John Favreau just do stuff and have fun because it was like a TV show. They didn't give a shit about a TV show, and it became super super awesome. Whereas in the main timeline, they're like put all their fingers in. It's got to be you've got to sell toys, and it's got to be diverse, and it's got to be all those other things. And you and after a while, it just becomes a mess. And that's mm-hmm. exactly what happened with the DC universe. It's got all we got to. F- you know, sell a million dollars. We got to sell a billion dollars. Got to be better than Marvel, and it's it's just a mess. And rather than just letting the create, even though I probably would never pick Zack Snyder to run the universe, because in my opinion, he does not understand the characters he's given. He does great fight scenes and does great action, but like character work is not his forte. Don't get me wrong; he's you know he's doing it. I'm not. Obviously, he's better at it than I am. But in my humble opinion, he does not do character work. Even though Ben Affleck is probably the best Batman I ever, ever. so absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, one hundred. That is not a hot take. That is a great take, and I'm glad we got to be all. And I will anybody who disagrees with me is obviously Batman. If you think that Ben Affleck's not the best Batman, he's no, awesome at it. He's great. No. <laughs> I mean, all he's going to be in there killing people though. That's all the things. He he's, 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 he's got a lot of villains. Yeah, but yeah, We're only back. Kevin Conroy is the only one we would take. But he was he was the voice, not the man in the suit. So, um, but yeah, Jared, go ahead and finish up if you got anything left on how to fix the DCU. Yeah, I just I think I think that's the way they're gonna do it because Snyder is nowhere near the level that Feige operates at, and Feige is what's holding the Marvel Cinematic Universe together. Mm-hmm. Does DC try to play catch up and do what Feige did in? Five movies in two movies. Right. It can't, it can't be done. So, no. They, awesome. they, didn't, they, don't, they don't have the patience because they couldn't. You got you to gotta lay the foundation with good movies and uh, Thor 1, you know, to, to get that foundation down. And then you do your Avengers. You don't jump into the Justice League second movie in Batman v Superman and the Justice League. It's, no. no. Or you just jump into the Justice League without trying to hold our hands about it, right? Mm-hmm. Like, right. Uh, there's a, a the I don't know if y'all ever seen this, but uh, Justice League War was uh, like kind of like the New Fifty Two reboot for the animated movies, and right. it was basically you were in New Fifty Two now. Here are your characters, and like it was an interesting setup. They had all the characters come together. You know, they had Batman show his Batmanness, like, oh yeah, you're Hal Jordan, you're. Uh, you know Barry Allen, you know, and like, how do you know that? Like, I'm a fucking Batman. I know shit. Right, <laughs> right, right. right. <laughs> and they had what, the, what was it? Uh, Green Lantern was like, oh, I thought you were a bat, like a real bat or something. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, you were a real bat. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was fun. <laughs> and it gave pretty much everybody like their their room to shine and why their powers are are important in the team, but also gave them like dark side from the jump. So it was a reason why they needed to come together because it was dark side. It wasn't fucking Steppenwolf. Who gives a shit about him? Like it was actual dark side. And his parademons and freaking open up, you know, boom gates and shit and 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 coming in to fucking destroy the world. So it it's not like you have to build these things up because as I said, we've we know Batman, we know Wonder Woman, we know Superman. You know, maybe you want to do a little thing about Martian Manhunter, but you know, the Flash, Aquaman, we don't really need to, to know what they're all about. We don't really need to know where they come from. We just need to know what their powers are, what their personalities are, and how they all fit together to fight off the big bad thing. And that's like, and you can, it's, it's not Bruce easy. You need an origin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the you, the no. world doesn't know Booster Gold like comics. Well, Booster Gold will well, need an origin story but yeah, like yeah. a booster well, gold actually, story could be fun because it could be like it's time travel so you don't have to start at the beginning of the story you can right. start that's at what any part you, of the story so you stole my idea because when i was writing about how we'll change it the first character i came so i'm thinking of it thinking of it booster gold is how i would reboot the whole franchise i'll reboot the whole franchise with booster gold and the fact there's time travel involved start the whole first 30 35 40 minutes of the movie Showing how Booster Gold is a wannabe hero, he's a loser, but it being, and I stole this from the Flash TV show, being a mark that like the Justice League 
basically get killed in the past. And so it spawned a whole movement of these younger heroes that were trying to take the spot. And Booster Gold's in that younger hero group that's trying to like figure out how to be like the next great hero, but he's a, he's a poser. But then I would have started with him, give him his villain, run his movie. But at the end of the movie, introduce the Blue Beetle, Hame. Not, I, I, want, I want my Latino representation. But Hame and is the Blue Beetle. And then that leads into the next one. And basically, you'll build this B team of DC heroes, all like the Avengers were, into like the new Justice League. But then I would say, eventually, so I would get Booster Gold. We would get Blue Beetle. Um, I would get like Dick Grayson eventually as like a leader of them, like because he like he was close with Batman and he knew blah blah blah. So I would get Dick Grayson in there. I would bring in people, even if he would be harder to do, but a Beast Boy movie would be harder. But figure out how to make that work out too as well, and just make this you know hodgepodge group of uh, heroes. And then my next my next next point would be like after they do, they get to join together, they fight whatever threat, make it Starro or something like that, so that it's. <laughs> Goofy enough, but fun enough, which I think they're going to do Starro in the next Suicide Squad. So we may not be able to have it, but have them, like, get Starro, somebody. They fight off them, and then, like, the next one has, like, you know, they do sequels for everybody. And then the next one, the, the second Justice League, or I guess would be third at this point, will be a situation where they have to fight Darkseid. And they realize, like, shit, and then I'm going to steal from the Avengers. They have to go back in time and fix the nexus point of the Justice League being destroyed. So that the Justice League can help save off this threat. And then we can play with the time shenanigans and we can go back to fucked up parts of the DC universe and boost the gold and all them funny, like fix the shit and make it like make Wonder Woman 84 and that suck. And going through the timeline and it kind of makes like that. Also, kind of that also, I feel like once you get fixed that Justice League, you can shoot that original one with boost the gold in them off into the legends. Well, you can start a whole another franchise with them being the Legends of Tomorrow, because that's what I already do on time, time those shenanigans or whatever. But then now you set back your real Justice League back in the right accordance and you move forward. But I think I'm like you. I think Booster Gold would be the best way to go because he is funny enough and silly enough. It's kind of like the Shazam movie, but more adult. And you can kind of get away with the fact that like he's not a good hero. So it kind of gives them that underdog, you know, believability, like make them come to the end of the movie that he figures out, okay, I can be a hero and it's not for the money, blah, blah, blah. And then he can meet Jaime and be like, that could set up to the next movie. Because I think, I think they're actually trying to do a Blue Beetle movie with Jaime, but I think Jaime is like gold because you get the whole talking beetle. That's all like, I mean, you can pretty much play Jaime like you play Peter Parker. Yeah. Like how Peter Parker's um his suit had the whole kill mode and all that with Iron Man. <laughs> how makes Beatles pretty much the same way. Like a little bit more murder. Like, you want me to eliminate it? Like, yeah. <laughs> so uh, but yeah, I think Booster Gold is the way because that way you can get time travel involved and that way you can kind of fix and retcon all that bullshit. Or my last one was that you just do Flashpoint and you can wipe away all that shit in one movie and pretend like it never happened. And just do Flashpoint <laughs> and then you can get all the heroes back the way you want them. Because whatever Barry Allen did, he fucked up the timeline, and now everything changed. And these heroes, Superman's actually not a broody bitch, and Batman actually, you know, didn't yeah. lose Robin when we did off camera and off screen. Who the fuck does that, Zack Snyder? Really? One of the biggest, <laughs> biggest things of Batman's mythology you do off screen, like no one knows about, no one hears about. You just see the suit. Like, give me a fucking break, like. At least he mentioned Robin, though, all right? Like, a lot of times <laughs> they're like, oh, Robin, like, they, he's like the redheaded stepchild. They don't want to even, like, mention, like, one of the best superheroes in the DC universe. They kind of like, keep, keep like, him as a in the, in the closet. Like, Robin is awesome. <laughs> At least he mentioned him. And he wasn't a 40-year-old man. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, oh yeah. my parents died. Chris, died. well, I can't remember the last name, but you're, like, 30. Who cares? Go, go get a job. <laughs> Oh, I mean, you want a Chris O'Donnell? We're in the 2020s. <laughs> we're in the 2020s. It's hard to sell a boy in tights now running around with an old man. I'm just saying. There's a lot of questions <laughs> that are going to be asked. You, you can age well, you can like, not like a child, but you can do like a teenager, like someone who's like 15, yeah. 16, who's got like, you know, angst and anger, who's all like, oh, what was me? I want to beat up everybody. And you have, you know, Bruce Wayne, who's nothing but angst and anger, trying to like stop him from being like a murderous thug and rather just like, Say hey, you can channel your your energy into a more, uh, well, I wouldn't say more constructive, but a less destructive way. Right. <laughs> you know, instead of killing people, just put them in the hospital. It's 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 better. <laughs> <laughs> put them in the hospital. 
<laughs> well, yeah, I mean, hell, you could just as well just start with Jason Todd being the Robin then and just run that Red Hood story pretty much and just have an adult Dick Grayson be part of it. Like, yeah. again, we don't need origin stories for these guys. Like, if people don't know who these people are, we have a thing called Google. People can find their backstories very easily. Like, I don't know anybody going to walk into a superhero movie and not know. You can just hint to it. You can just, you know, it's called dialogue. It's called, you know, like, hey, I haven't seen you in five years. Where have you been, Dick? He's like, oh, I've been in Bloodhaven. You, you know, you have this be a part of the storyline. Like, you know, Dick Grayson hasn't been around, but he used to work with Batman, you know. He used to go by Robin. You know, it doesn't have to be like, you know, let's – do a whole movie about where Robin came from and why Jason Todd's <laughs> mad or anything like that. You you can do it all in the same movie. You just don't make that the the primary focus of the story. It's it's not. I mean, obviously, I don't do it, so it's, it's it probably is right. rocket science, but it's not rocket science. Right? It, it is. It, it isn't hard. Um, <laughs> so I guess in closing notes, do we think the DC universe will turn itself around, Jared? To your point earlier, Jason, that would have to be one hell of a time heist to fix Wonder Woman 84. Um, <laughs> one hell of a time heist. Don't know if that could... First, you gotta, you gotta talk to her about consent and what that means. <laughs> oh she definitely, like, mind control raped that dude. But, <laughs> mm, mm. That's, that's, uh, maybe in, in, in Famous Cure, they don't have to worry about consent, but here in America, that's a big deal. Now, right? <laughs> big deal. You should, you should. <laughs> what was the point? You had a wish. It was a wish. Just fucking make him blink into existence. Next I, episode, we can go all into the, on this movie, please, because oh I have God. so many notes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put that I, in my notes. One woman in secret because Batman didn't know about her. Had to find her out later. Found out about her, you know. So they and they so only they had a picture of her from 1911. And it's like, right. dude, she's running around 80s DC. Like yeah. someone yeah. got a picture of her. Right? Yeah, she took her. TR off or whatever and hit a security camera. You know, they're still- they're they're attached to uh videotapes. Yeah. <laughs> she just yeah. the videotapes. She destroyed the camera. The it's still got it with the not in the 80s. <laughs> it was just video fake tapes. video tapes and cameras there. You know really after that happened, they're pulling the tapes. Yeah. The <laughs> <laughs> Gotta check that shit out. <laughs> like, you just see this? Where was he wearing? You definitely want to check that out. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So, so uh, Jason, any hope? In, y'all got any hope in fixing it? I have hope in the next Batman movie. I have hope in the next Suicide Squad movie. But after that, I have no hope. I mean, it's mm. they're just. I mean, it's AT and T at this point, and AT and T is probably one of the greediest, most I don't give a fuck about the consumer companies of all time. Like I got them, and they be fucking me up on my bill every month. They don't care about anything. They just want their their dollars and cents. So they will put their fingers in anything that they will they feel like they need to put their fingers into. So I have no hope. But hopefully the next two movies will be good. I don't know. Uh, I'm right there with you. I, I think it's done. I think they need to go ahead and put this to bed and, and start all over again. Um, well, that is a – before we leave real quick, me and Jared talked about it. Better Avatar, Korra or Aang? You'll get me beat up. <laughs> Korra, 100%. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> You're gonna get me beat up, man. I can't say that stuff out loud. <laughs> hey, I say it all the time. Course, the better avatar. <laughs> I was a big Corey. fan of Juan. <laughs> I'm also a big fan of Juan as well. Juan is awesome. okay. Next show, we're ranking <laughs> top. Our next show, then. He's <laughs> Cora's Cor- one. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, Aang, Cora's Juan, and um, Roku, Kiyoshi, Kiyoshi's, and um, Kiyoshi. yeah, and Roku. Oh yeah, so we got, we got, yeah. Top you, five avatars. We'll rank next for the beginning of the show next week. You got the, so, uh, we'll, the surfing waterbender guy whose wife's face got stolen by Co. And he was a on, relaxed. We know he's dead last. Come on, we know he's dead last. <laughs> he he even said he was dead last. He was like, yeah. "No, nah, I wasn't a good avatar. Hey, don't ask for my advice." Next. <laughs> That joker was like, yeah, nah, hey, I sucked at my job. I was just always trying to surf, my man. Surf and get bathed. You need to ask yeah. for these other ones. Okay. The waterbender being a surfer, that's like match made in heaven. It's like, <laughs> right. oh, there's, no there's going to be swells. <laughs> All right, next episode, we're going to rank avatars. Then we're going to let Jason air out his grief, uh, grief on Wonder Woman 84. Um, <laughs> thank everybody for listening. Again, please remember to like, share, subscribe. The Head Cannon Circus on Facebook, YouTube. We're on all DSPs, Spotify, iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. 
Anchor FM. You can find us everywhere. So please join us. Uh, please comment. Maybe it's something that you watching that you're loving that you think we should review or talk about. We'll talk about it. Jaron will bring his notes um, <laughs> and dissect it. We will do that. Um, Jaron, anything you want to say to anybody before we get off? Thanks for having me, man. Had a blast. Hey, man, Jaron's in Home Alone, man. He's Macaulay Culkin in it, like, this weekend. <laughs> Jason, about you, anything you want to say to anybody? Just be kind to one another. That's all. Hey, greatest words to end on, guys. We will see you all next week. We out of here. Peace.